What's up guys, Riley here with Hodson Motors, here with our International Harvester Scout 2. This is our next giveaway truck that we're doing here, HodsonMotors.com. Uh, if you're new to the channel or you're just finding us here at Hodson Motors, we buy, restore, and give away classic trucks just like this one right here. And to get entered, all you gotta do is go to our site, pick out something that you like, and get some entries in to win. Every $5 spent between now, if you're watching this video, and February 4th at midnight, 2024, is one automatic entry into winning this truck. If you're watching this video after February 4th, 2024, this giveaway's closed, but we're probably giving away something else that's equally as cool, so go ahead and check us out. But today's video is about our Scout 2 and all the ins and outs, all the goodies. This is the full walk around video of the Scout, so let's go ahead and let's uh, let's hop right in on this bad boy. So, uh, Scout, International Harvester, this is not a company that is around today in the consumer automotive world. International Harvester is a tractor builder in every way, shape, or form. They build diesel motors for companies like Ford. They built Ford 6.0, Ford 7.3, their IDIs, all sorts of different stuff. But they're a very old company. And back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and early 80s, they built passenger vehicles. This is probably the most famous passenger vehicle that they built. This is the Scout 2. It's called the Scout 2 because International made a Scout, the, the Scout 1. Nobody calls it the Scout 1, but it's the Scout 80 or Scout 800. And there's a couple different denominations. That's a smaller four-wheel drive vehicle. It's really little. These are a bigger, more station wagon proportion vehicle that's all jacked up and made four-wheel drive. So these are a really cool truck. They got a rich history. Uh, these are very, very, very collectible. If you go on to Facebook Marketplace or eBay, these things command a really high premium. This is a very nice truck that we've done for you guys now. This is one of our favorite and our nicest restorations that we've ever done for a giveaway truck. And it is really, really, really cool. So let's hop in show you all the goods, all the bads, all the nitty gritty. Let's hop in. But let's just start right up here in the front end of the truck. So this is the 78 to 79 grill. This grill, when we got it, was painted all black. We did a good job restoring it, making it silver again. We've got some LED headlights. We've got an off-road bumper from Affordable Off-Road. These are great bumpers, I have to say. I've bought some off-the-shelf bumpers in the past, and I never like to throw any companies under the bus. So I don't say who built them if I'm not happy with them. But this bumper is very, very, very nice. These fit perfect. They look cool. And the truck is very square and boxy. So Kind of a square boxy front bumper with a cool pre-runner push bar and everything there is really cool. Uh, we've got this nice 12,000 pound winch on the front. Um, this is an Amazon special and x -Bull winch. However, I have to show you something. The reason why I bought this winch, oh, and I apologize, it's a 13,500 pound winch. Way more than this truck would ever need. But the reason why I bought this winch is I was looking for winches online and I came across this thing. And this thing has a stinking magnetic fair lead. It's got magnets in there so that your fair lead, when you put the winch away, stays in there night it's so slick and by that i was like dude i doubt this winch is ever gonna get used i don't know who wins this truck if they're ever gonna go seriously seriously off-roading but it looks awesome and the magnetic fairway is on there and the, the winch does work good i've ran other expo winches and they work just fine but synthetic cable winch really cool there but up here in the front end very clean besides that bumper nothing really crazy going on here but we'll squat down so i can show you something here in the front before we move on we've got a front shackle reversal this is from our friends over at age parts america they helped us out a ton on this build so i have to give them a big shout out they hooked us up with a bunch of parts and uh, they've got almost everything you need to restore these trucks so if you have a scout hit up ihp parts america they're great and they sell these shackle reversal kits putting the shackle in the back making the front uh, suspension on this ride so much better so much nicer the ride on this truck is really 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 good let's talk about probably the most noticeable thing on the truck has got to be the color this truck is a satin army green it is a great satin paint job now we have seen some awful awful satin paint jobs come through our shop that are cracking up and beat up that just look like death this is a nice satin green paint job and the bodywork they did on it beforehand is like stupid, stupid straight. It is super, super, super nice. So, you know, we, we, we love army green. It's one of our business colors you'll see on our website and stuff like that. I was like, man, this is a sick scout. But when I bought it, it was all blacked out and just army green and had no top. And it was like, okay, how do we make this a little less monochromatic? So we brought back in some of the polished accents. We did some polished wheels. And then we said, you know, we got to get a hard top for this. We didn't want to just do a soft top. They don't quite look right, in my opinion. The roof line's a little too low. So we found a really nice hard top out in the middle of nowhere, Arizona. And we brought that in and restored the hard top up really nice and kept the factory luggage rack and stuff up there. But we were nervous when we got after this and we knew we wanted to do the rally decals. Um, I don't know if this is a factory rally e truck. I'm just going to make that disclaimer now. I don't know if it's a factory rally e truck, but it had a factory rally e factory steering wheel um, i know i just said factory twice but it had a oem rally steering wheel which are hard to find and i was like man i don't think somebody would have just swapped over the steering wheel so we said you know what let's just call it a rally who cares everybody does this scout guys international guys are cool and i have to make that disclaimer they're really cool guys i posted a picture of it 
nobody's like, oh, is that a real rally or a, or a, a make believe rally? None of that. People are cool. They're just like, that's freaking rad. The stripes are really cool. But we were nervous. Like, man, do we do white stripes? Do we do a black top? Do we do black stripes? Do we paint the top green? What's the color combo that we're going here? And you know, going on here, we've got four different colors. We've got the satin green, we've got the flat black and the decals, we've got the gloss white on the roof, and then we've got all the polished accents, which to me was really risky to do, but I think it paid off huge. It's really attractive. The truck just looks so, so, so good. So let's squat down here. Let's look at some more suspension and some more wheels and tires and whatnot. So. We've got some 17 inch Method NV wheels. These are their polished wheels with their black bow beadlock ring. Great looking wheel, looks great on all the classics. I've used this wheel a lot, it's a great wheel. But wrapped around it is Milestar's newest tire. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal tire. This is their 275-8017. This means that it is a 34 and a half, so basically a 35 inch tire, but that's only 10 and a half inches wide. That is a massive game changer when it comes to classics, because classics, in my opinion, just don't look right running a 1250-35. The proportions look off. It looks like it's running too wide of a tire. This looks period correct on this truck, but you get a modern radial. It is an insanely quiet tire with zero tire howl on the road. They're a great tire. And because it's a skinny 35, you can clear 35s with no body lift. There is no body lift on this truck and uh, it does not rub. It doesn't rub the frame, anything like that. Speaking of the frame, these Scouts had a boxed frame from the factory, so they're super stout off-road. You don't get any body flex or anything like that. It's super nice and they're stronger, but we also reinforce the frame at the steering box as well. So this thing is actually pretty freaking nice off-road. But back to these tires, they're great, they're skinny, they don't rub. But when we bought the truck, it had 35, 1250s on it, but it had a three inch body lift in order to clear those tires. We were like, no way, that is dangerous amount of body lift. I'm okay with like one inches, maybe two inches of body lift at the most, but three inches is like, no, this is, you're asking for some broken body mounts for sure. So I'm sure you guys seen that video, the Jeep with body lifts and it freaking the cab pops off the frame while they're off-roading. We don't want that to happen here. So took out the body lift and uh, we we're still able to clear 35s because of the skinny tire with uh, just a little bit more lift. So in order to get that lift, that shackle reversal gives you a little bit. And then we're running six inch shackles front and rear with four inch leaf springs, four inch lift springs. The ride is really good. The ride's great because we're running some Rancho adjustable shocks. So adjustable dampening shocks. And the ride on this thing is great on road and off road. Um, you'll see as we go do our driving impressions here in a minute, the ride on this thing is really, really, really good. Uh, but coming down the side again, we've got our rally stripes. We've got new emblems, new H emblems. A new antenna, all new polished pieces. Um, these are Bronco mirrors. They did not make this mirror for this truck. In my opinion, on a classic, this is just the most timeless mirror you can put on a classic. It looks good on everything. And we didn't want to put the, the Scout factory mirrors were like a very car-esque, very small mirror. And it makes it impossible to drive with that small of a mirror. So we said, you know what? Let's do some Bronco mirrors. They fit up great with very minimal modifications. We got rivnuts nuts in the door. So not just some cheap plastic trim, um, trim clips. So they're in there nice and tight and stout. But coming down the side here, we get our nice rally decal as we come down the side. Um, all of our door handles and stuff, we, we remained in chrome and polish and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, down the side here, you'll see what looks like a rocker panel. It is, or a rock guard or a rock slider. It is not, these are actually electric running boards. Let's talk about these for a minute. So here's our electric running boards. These are e-boards from Rough Country. You might be saying, what in the world? Why would you build this nice of a truck and put Rough Country boards on your truck? These boards are, in my opinion, better than amp steps. We had to do some heavy modification. Anytime you're gonna put electric running boards on any classic, you're gonna have to modify them. So we had to modify them, but they're they're a better board. A, they're, they're very easy to wire up, but they're better because they have two motors. You have a motor front and rear, and it makes the, the motion on these boards as they go up and down super, super, super easy. So let me show you that. And they go up nice, they tuck up nice and tight. These are a great, great, great thing. This is something we do on all of our giveaway trucks now is we just gotta do the running boards, especially as we're getting up to 35 inch tires. We don't try to have to jump up to get up in there. So the running boards are nice, a great addition. So we keep coming down the side, you'll see this top. This is the factory luggage rack on the top of the truck here. Um, I was gonna build a cool aftermarket roof rack, but we put a vote out on our Instagram and people on Instagram were like, no, leave that, that luggage rack. So we, we pulled it off. We stripped it down, got rid of all the gunk that was on it, made the made the chrome pop again, and then we did a new wood grain vinyl inlay up there, and it looks super nice. Uh, down the side here, we've got new glass on all of the top, so new side glass, new back glass. It looks really nice too. Uh, we have sliders for the truck. However, we couldn't find slider window gaskets um, to in time for this giveaway, so we just had flat glass put in. The flat glass looks better than the sliders. The sliders are just cool. It's a it's a deal. If you've got your kids in the back, maybe sliders would have been nice, but this truck has air conditioning. You don't need to open the windows if you don't want to. But, you know, we went back and forth. The, the flat glass sure does look better, but the, and the sliders rattle, so I don't know. I don't know what we'll do with the sliders. Maybe we'll give them to the winner and let them choose what they want to do down the road. 
Um, as we keep coming down the side, normally this Scout 2 emblem would be here along with the uh, the marker light, the rear three quarter marker light, but it was kind of getting a little crowded down here with the decal and everything else. We thought, these are stick on emblems. Let's put it up on, up on the camper shell. It looks better. It looks like it fits in that area better. And I think it gives it a little bit of bling to the camper shell that it needs. Um, so we really like that. It looks really cool. Let's come around back here and show you what's going on in the tailgate section. Back here in the back, we've got another rear bumper. This is again, the elite bumper from Affordable Off-Road. Really nice, a full size spare tire and uh, their tire carrier. So this is a sweet deal. Let me show you how this opens. It's super easy. So then this just opens, got a nice, really big threaded screw that goes in here. I don't know, the threaded bolt, threads in. You thread that out. This thing is stout and is not bouncing around when going down the road. I was on the highway earlier, no bouncing around. It's super quiet. You're not getting a bunch of tire rattling going around. So again, this pops all the way out and then pops into place and it will stay locked in there. Really nice. Uh, back here on the tailgate, we've got a new international emblem on the tailgate in its factory location. We did our own Hots and Motors emblem there that we cut up on our plasma table and polished up to make it look nice. Back here in the back again, we did a bunch of work restoring this, uh, getting this nice. We got some gas struts up in there hold that up and then there's your back end a lot of space back there put your dogs back there uh, that back bench seat is removable and can come right out and so you know you can get a lot of stuff in here you can fit plywood back there all sorts of stuff and still work with it but it's carpeted throughout so carpet down the side walls carpet all the way out and and um, it's super nice it makes the sound deadening a lot nicer as well and the tailgate shuts just like that and then you're good so tailgate area back here is nice it's clean it all works well it's easy to get in and out of and uh, we like it. And this bumper has a trailer receiver back there as well. So again, you could pull, if you had a little trailer to pull with it, I'd do it, it's cool. All right, as we keep coming back down the side here, we've got our filler neck on this side. And then this thing has a custom made fuel tank underneath, a steel fuel tank underneath. It's probably 30 gallons, 32 gallons, something like that. So you got a lot of fuel on this baby. Uh, as we keep coming down here, Again, same thing on the other side, nothing crazy. But if we look down, you'll see our exhaust hanging out. You'll see maybe two little turn downs down there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but this thing has just this two true dual exhaust. So we got true duals and then we just got our two mufflers and then two turn downs right there. So um, this thing sounds really healthy. We'll start it up here in a second and show you. All right, let me, uh, let's pop the hood before we hop on the inside. Let's pop the hood. Let's talk about the engine bay and what's all goodness under there. So to pop the hood on these, it's kind of goofy. Normally you have a hood pop like right here, you don't. Kind of a pain in the butt. I will say, this is one of the quirks of uh, uh, International. The hood pops in the middle of the dash. Kind of dumb. We'll show you on the other side, but kind of stupid. But it's okay. You know what? Classics, they have their quirks. They have their things, and you just love them for it. You know, kind of frustrates people when they don't know about it. But the hoods on these are really cool. They open from the front, and uh, we really like that. It's rad. And so the hood rotates forward. And uh, there you can see inside our engine bay. So uh, really pretty clean and pretty simple. We tried our best to keep our wiring clean in there, but we've got our, there's our Holly Sniper 2. Um, I talk about this when we're driving around. I'll talk more about the Sniper 2, uh, but I will just suffice it to say that it makes this thing run so good. And it makes, uh, it, and you know, it, it makes better power. It runs phenomenally. It idles phenomenally. It does good in the cold. It does good in the hot. Definitely worth the extra money over the Sniper and way better than just running the carb. I know a lot of people are afraid of EFI. They don't know how to tune them and all that kind of stuff. The Sniper 2 solved the issues the Sniper 1 had in its self-tunability. Sniper 1, I did maybe a dozen Sniper 1s and I was always having to tune and finick with them and mess with them. Sniper 2 is literally, I put it on this thing I set the idle with the idle screw and let it go. And this thing runs so, so, so good. You'll hear it in a minute. It's great. It's awesome. But in here, we've just got, again, our brake booster, our battery, and we've got our factory air conditioning and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of this is all factory parts, ACs, all factory, um, power steering, and all that kind of stuff is factory in there. But try our best to keep it clean. The only thing kind of aftermarket you can see in there is going to be just our fuel pressure regulator. Um, this is one of the issues they solved with the Sniper 2 is they got rid of the internal regulator in the Sniper 2 and they, and they give it to you with an external regulator. It's a must to have the external regulator. It works way better than the small diaphragm ones. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this is mumbo jumbo. Don't worry about it. But again, it's just better to have that fuel pressure regulator with the gauge on there so that you can see, you know, if, if the truck one day stops running, and you don't know what's going on, you look at your fuel pressure regulator and you notice that I've got no fuel pressure, then you know, oh, my fuel pump must be bad or a wire must have come disconnected, something like that. So it's nice to have that gauge there. Um, this has a mechanical fan on the front with the factory, you know, a factory replacement radiator. It does not overheat. It runs nice and cool, even up the trail, just barely crawling along. A lot of times you don't have enough airflow flowing past because, you know, of the mechanical fan. Nope, this thing runs nice and cool, no overheating. Uh, but then you can see there the 345, they're kind of a, nostalgic very famous engine because they've got you know the red intake and all that kind of stuff so they're cool they say international down the valve cover and they're really rad but again 
very clean engine bay, but nothing crazy, nothing, nothing insane. Some goofiness about the internationals again, like that weird upper radiator hose that snakes around and all that kind of stuff, but we love it. It's cool. The pain about this is that when you pop the hood as the driver, then you got to walk over the passenger side to go shut it. So I think international was just worried about people's hearts. They wanted people to get their steps in, you know, they didn't want people getting fat. So weighing down their vehicles, but the hood shuts great. It's aligned perfectly and it's great. So now let's go ahead and hop in the engine, hop in the interior and let me show you what my favorite part about this truck is, is definitely this interior. And you can see it when we open this door is that sweet, 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 dark brown with the green, brown and tan and black plaid interior. It is super, super, super cool. Uh, we really like it. It's rad. It is a rad interior. So these front bucket seats, these are buckets out of a Mustang. These are from an 80s Mustang. They're kind of an ugly seat, but they have a headrest, which is nice. Uh, they're nice and well bolstered. They're on a slider track, so you can adjust back and forward. And your back is adjustable as well. So this is a nicer seat. The truck came with these Mustang seats. They were gray. It was still the Mustang embroidery. We thought, man, maybe we throw these away. Nah, we kept them. We reupholstered them. They look really nice. These are the factory door panels. These are metal door panels. They're very nice and we had them wrapped in the brown leather and then put that, uh, that, that plaid insert in there and those look really good. Again, these are factory door arm pads, handles, all that kind of stuff. None of that we really changed, but it's very nice in there. Again, you can see all that brand new carpet. We carpeted the trans tunnel. We put in new shift boots in the trans tunnel. Up on the dash there, the dash again is painted green to match the rest of the truck. That's a really nice feature. And you can see that factory air conditioning. That was a factory option air conditioning underneath that. We restored that, put in some new switches but we left the factory AC and it works really, really, really good. It blows ice cold and moves a ton of air. It's a great system, uh, but it's an AC only system in there. Your heat is a separate control. You have separate controls for your heat inside, but we restored that, repainted it, put new vents in from, we use vintage air vents and cut the holes a little bit bigger so we could use those vents. And then we did new wood grain vinyl, the same wood grain vinyl that's up there. So again, you just get that nice detail that flows throughout. Um, up inside, you can see this headliner, our friends at Ian Auto did all this upholstery. They did, again, the back seat is done to match, but they did the whole upholstery. They, they made this headliner. It's, it's an interesting headliner because this is single pane. It's a single pane roof. So we couldn't really attach things to the roof. And so we said, okay, let's come up with something different. So they made this headliner in seven pieces and then wrapped the cross members here in the plaid as well to tie it back in. I think it looks really good. It was a creative fix to a problem. Um, and then boom, you've got our visor up there, but we had to continue to tie in Again, that uh, that plaid on the visor, which looks really, really, really cool. Uh, here's that steering wheel I was talking about. This is the factory rally steering wheel. We restored this steering wheel and rewrapped this steering wheel in the matching vinyl and then redid our, our horn button with a new Scout emblem there. And uh, it just looks great. Cleaned up all of our knobs. We've got factory gauges in there as well. Factory gauges all work. The Speedo doesn't bounce or anything. All the gauges work properly. It's super nice and uh, it's great to be in. The dash is in great condition as well. That's the factory dash. It just has one tiny little crack in there that you can't really tell. I'm not going to show you where it is in the video, but the dash is in great condition as well. And that's all good and dandy. Glove box works. We got a new glove box insert on the other side. And again, this interior is just super nice. Very, very, very comfortable. I'm going to actually grab the camera now and show you what it's like in here. From outside, you can see this is a great, great, great seating position. I'm six foot tall, uh, 200 pounds. I have plenty of headroom. This steering wheel points down at me, so I'm right behind the steering wheel. You know, a lot of times you drive in a classic and the steering wheel has to be like this, you know, so your knee doesn't hit. You have a tilt steering column, but it points right at you. This glove box, we built the glove box custom here and then we had Ian's wrap it and uh, it's really nice. It sits right at the perfect location so your elbow can just rest right on it. So again, you got plenty of leg room, you're super comfortable. A bigger guy can fit in this. I think a lot of people are like, no, I'm too big, I can't fit in a Scout 2. No, you can, a big guy can fit in this. I'm perfectly, perfectly comfortable. Um, everything again is right there at my fingertips and uh, I'll take the camera now and show you kind of what it's like in here from my point of view. So again, there's your steering wheel, super nice. Um, your shift boots, everything there is super nice and comfortable. Again, you got your, this is a uh, retro sound radio from retro sound. This is their scout Two specific radio. So it fits perfectly in the stock dash. And then you got all your gauges in there. Super nice and factory OEM stuff. So headlight switch is right down here, right with your wiper as well. And that's super nice. And then you can't forget just the last little Easter egg in here is our keychains for the Scout 2. And they came out really, really, really good. So uh, again, for an interior, this is super nice. It's comfortable. We love being in it. We love sitting in it. It's great to be in here. So with that being said, let's uh, let's start it up so you can hear it. And let's take it for a test drive. And so you guys can see just how uh, just how great it is to drive. Again, Holly Sniper, you let that fuel pump prime. Once the pump primes, crank it over. And she sounds, she sounds incredible. Listen to that thing. Sounds, sounds beefy. And again, the idle, 
the idle because of the the holly sniper it bounces right back up you don't have an issue and it just sounds so 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 rad so uh with that let's go ahead and and let's uh let's go for a little test drive shall we so let's just talk about suspension and how everything does. You know, normally when you're driving a classic, you really are getting beat up, but this thing's actually pretty dang nice off-road. This is, this definitely rides better than our Toyota pickup did. And those Toyota pickups are awesome and people love driving those off-road. This is better than that. Um, I'm sure in the camera, it looks pretty shaky, but it's, uh, you know, this is for a truck on leaf springs, this thing does still pretty stinking good. It's very comfortable. It handles the small bumps really well. So the washboard doesn't feel like death when you're coming after it. Um, but no, I will say it, it, it is nice. Um, the, one of the great things about scouts is that they have a box frame from the factory. So the whole chassis is boxed and, and I, that really does make a huge difference off road. The box chassis makes this thing very stable. You don't get any body reflex when you're driving it off road. So everything that you're feeling is all suspension and tire, which is really good. Um, the steering in these things is light and easy. So even off road, you know, it's still one handed and I really like that and that's good and fun. Um, but yeah, I would say off-road. Yeah, I mean, it's still a classic. You're still gonna get kind of bounced around a little bit um, And you're not doing any crazy off-road highway speeds. You're not gonna be hauling through the desert freaking 65 miles an hour or anything stupid, but um, But it's nice. I, I, I have I would have no problem doing some trails going camping in this thing I don't feel like we're getting beat up at all um, These seats are nice and comfortable too and they're bolsterous enough to where you know, I, I'm, I'm actually enjoying this. This is actually pretty stinking fun. This is our first time taking it off road. And so every time we take something off road for the first time, it's always a little nerve wracking, but this thing's actually doing really good. There's no weird noises either. I feel like a lot of times when we're, when we build a truck and we take it off road for the first time, you get all these weird clunks and squeaks and stuff. And this thing's actually pretty quiet. Um, you know, it's got that lopy cam, which you can hear and, and, uh, but you know, it's, it's pretty nice off road. I, I enjoy this a lot. This is pretty freaking sweet. Um, now, speaking of that Lopi cam, it makes for a good off-road engine for sure. Uh, that This 345, cam 345 is really good. They make really good low-end torque. So for off-roading, this is a good engine and it is a good choice. Uh, it runs really good too, and we've got a good cooling system. There's no bubbles in our cooling system. There's We don't have any problems with it overheating. Sometimes you'll see that with old scouts is they'll overheat when they're on the trail because they're just not moving fast enough. This thing is just still sitting below the, uh, just, just right there, right at its thermostat level. So. I will say off-road, uh, this is a winner. I really like this thing off-road and uh, this is gonna be kind of a fun camping rig for sure. So um, now this trail that we're doing, that isn't really much of a four-wheel drive trail. So so we don't have the chance to test out our, our transfer case here and see how it will actually do, nor do I really want to. This is a giveaway truck. And the last thing I really want to do is is go and take it on some crazy trail and beat the crap out of it for one of you, before one of you guys wins it. So, uh, suffice it to say, if you're gonna go do some trails, do some camping, this thing is gonna be perfect. All right, we are back on the road. Um, let's tell you guys, guys kind of what it's like driving this bad boy. So, um, that 345, again, that nice mild cam, nice lopy. I wouldn't even call it a mild cam. I wouldn't call it a medium cam, uh, a heavy cam either. It's somewhere in between, but it has a nice little chop to it. Um, that makes for around town driving really, really, really nice because you have some, you actually have some passing power. Thing makes good, good, good power. Honestly, um, it it'll get out of its own way. You're not gonna do, you're not gonna be doing burnouts or anything crazy, but it gets out of its own way and it's nice. Um, but yeah, the truck is like an around town grocery getter, daily driver. This thing's really nice. I think you guys can hear on camera. It's quiet in here. I mean, we're doing 40 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour, and it is like dead quiet in here at 35. Uh, which means for your everyday driving stuff and needs, you're not going to be hating this thing. You're not going to be like, man, it makes so much noise. Even though it has that nice lopy cam. Um, yeah, maybe going through a drive through you'd blow out the people in the drive throughs ears with it. But, um, you know, in reality, inside the cab, it's pretty quiet in here. It's pretty nice. You get, you can still hear your engine. You can still hear that nice little lope. But, but it is very quiet. There's no wind noise in here. So the, the vent windows, they don't whistle at all. The windshield doesn't whistle. You're not hearing any crazy noise from the lugger trap, any of that. So it's, it is very nice and quiet in here, which for me is one of the biggest detractors from a, from a classic truck is all of the noise that they make. You can't just kind of relax and have a good cruise in them sometimes because they just are so noisy. This thing's not, it's nice. So I got to give it props there. Um, comfortability wise, this thing is comfortable. I was not a fan of these Mustang seats when we bought this truck. I was like, these seats have got to go in the trash and we're gonna have to try and find an aftermarket seat or find some nice scout buckets. But then we said, you know what? No, let's make these work, let's reupholster them. And I am so happy that we did because they are comfortable. They are nice, 
they're adjustable. They've got adjustable backs and they're adjustable for leg room. And so I, I like them, I do. They're comfortable, they've got good bolsters and everything's good there. Now we're getting into the throttle a little bit more. You can hear it, you know, but still I'm talking at a normal pace right now. And then we've got our juice. She, she, she moves, she boogies. And then boom. I, honestly, it's freaking awesome. Okay, no, no, no complaints about the power and the speed here for me. It's pretty nice. So uh, back to the comfortability. Very comfortable. Um, these seats are great. They're super comfy. You sit nice and low in them. If you've ever driven like a full-size Jeep, a Jeep Wagoneer, or a Jeep J truck, this drives very similar to one of those. So you sit down low and kind of near the floor, which makes it so that your legs are kind of nice and extended. I don't feel like my, my legs, I don't feel like I'm sitting with my knees up high or anything like that. You sit with your legs nice and extended, which is a huge bonus. And then this steering column, with the way, the, the position and where it exits from the firewall puts the steering column in the farthest down tilted position, tilted right at you which to, in my opinion is right where you want the steering wheel. A tilt wheel is only good because a tilt wheel allows you a little bit of extra space. You know, if you tilt the wheel, it gets enough out of your way, but nobody wants to be driving like this. Nobody wants to be driving it like a school bus, something stupid, no. You wanna have your wheel pointed at you, which is the way this thing drives naturally, and it is really, really, really nice. Um, so yeah, driving position this thing is freaking killer. You got tons of visibility looking right out the windshield, right over the hood, and that's killer too. We're on a little bit of a decline right now, and so you can hear the engine is basically barely running, and uh, this thing is just quiet as can be. Again, almost no wind noise in here. You can barely even hear the wind kind of hitting our tow mirrors out there. Um, in terms of visibility, you've got a lot of glass in these scouts, a lot of glass. And so when you look over your shoulder, you can see you know everything around you. Now, there's no tint on these windshields right now, so it's a little bit of a fishbowl in here, but everybody's tint laws are different. And so we're not going to go tint in a truck and then it has to go to a state where they're not allowed to have any tint. So if their winner wants some tint, we can get it tinted for them after they win. But again, it's a little bit of a fishbowl, but it is nice in here. It's, it, it, it is nice and comfortable to sit in. I really like it. Um, again, with your seating position, you know, everything is kind of right at, at an arm's reach. Your shifter is kind of right in a good place as well. And, uh, you know, you, you reach your steering wheel. I mean, reach, sorry, you can reach up to your radio pretty easily, turn that up. Um, it's a little far from you in the factory location there, but still it's all pretty easily reachable here with where you're sitting. Uh, we built this center console custom and the console is right at the, per I'm six feet tall and it is right at my perfect height where my elbow just sits on it nice and comfortably. And then your, your other arm pad and your door panel, you know, you can rest your other arm down and it's right at the same height. And so you can drive with, other, with either hand if you want to and just relax and cruise in this thing. So that's really nice. Um, in terms of steering, a lot of people bash on Scouts because of their steering, and rightly so, because Scouts from the factory have zero degrees of caster. And if you don't know what caster is, um, suffice it to say that caster is what allows your wheels to return back to center. Um, and the, the less caster you have, the more all over the road your car will be. It will ping pong between the lanes. Um, and so because these had zero degrees of caster from the factory, they do ping pong around the lanes a lot. And we did our best to mitigate that without having to go in and tear our axle apart and cut it and turn the, axle, the knuckles, which is a ton of work. We didn't want to do that. Um, it's a giveaway truck. We still have to limit some things on a giveaway truck. And so we did uh, two degree caster shims and two degree caster ball joint sleeves for a total of almost four degrees, probably somewhere between three and four degrees of caster. And it actually drives really good. This is a one hand driver. It returns back to center plenty easy. The steering is still light, which is an indicator of it not having quite enough caster. As you add more caster, the steering gets firmer. And this steering is still pretty light, but it is not dangerous at all. I don't feel scary. I'm not having to do this number and like fight it in the lane. Or if you've ever driven a solid axle truck with not enough caster, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, you're kind of guessing, uh, is it gonna go back to center? Is it not? What am I doing? No, this thing is just one handed driving. It's cruising. So the steering is great. I'm happy with the steering. Um, I wouldn't do anything more to it. I'm stoked about it, so I'm really happy about that. Um, now let's go back to that camshaft. The camshaft is great because it helps you make good power. You know, if I want to drop a gear and make some power and move, it'll do that, and that's awesome. However, there is a downside to that camshaft. Um, the downside of that camshaft is that it doesn't make a lot of vacuum, and so when you're cruising around like this, you've got good vacuum, you have good brakes, it's still safe. Um, however, when you're driving around a parking lot, you are pressing the brake pedal a little bit more to get those brakes to work and help you. 
Uh, you don't have a lot of vacuum boost when you're at idle. So driving around a parking lot's not the most fun thing in the world because you're just having to step on the brakes a little bit harder. But once you're out cruising and you've built some vacuum, the brakes work really good and it stops good and it will stop fast. And so there's no problem there. Obviously you can see that we still need to do an alignment. Uh, nothing's perfect. And so we still gotta align it. We'll do that soon. And then this thing will be ready to go. Lastly, on our last little bit of this dry, I wanna talk about that fuel injection. The fuel injection of these things makes them run just perfect. I've done a million Sniper 1s and this is the new Sniper 2 from Holly. It is so much better than the Sniper 1. The Sniper 1 did not feel like fuel injection. It felt like a more complicated carburetor. And uh, I was trying my best to, to like the Sniper 1, and I never did. I never liked the Sniper 1. But the Sniper 2, you put it on there, you set your parameters, you let it go. This thing runs so good. This thing runs as good as, as, good as any LS swap I've ever driven. It's great. So um, again, big, big props to Holly for fixing what was wrong with the Sniper 1 and for making the Sniper 2 way better. So uh, we're almost back to the shop, so we'll end this video there. All right. Okay, I would consider that a pretty successful video. We had a good time driving off-road, driving on the street, showing you guys kind of what it's like, giving you all the ins and outs of this bad boy. I have to say, this truck is freaking rad. It is a great truck and is gonna make for a great giveaway. Again, it is, uh, it's full of character. These Scouts are really cool. They're very, very, very solid. That's probably what I'd say the most thing about it. It's an extremely solid vehicle, very solid, good on-road, good off-road. Um, it's gonna make for one heck of a classic daily driver. This thing is really, really, really rad. So. Again, if you like it and you've liked this video and you want to win this bad boy, go to hotsummotors.com. We'll link it here in the description. Uh, pick out anything that you like on our site. Absolutely everything on the site will get you entries in to win this bad boy. Every $5 you spend is one automatic entry um, as long as you're watching this video before February 4th at midnight. If you're watching this after February 4th at midnight, we might be giving away something else that's equally just as cool. So check that out as well. Um, but yeah, get in before February 4th at midnight, get your stuff. If you want some extra bonus entries, subscribe. You get some more, you get a better bang for your buck on subscription entries. So subscribe there as well. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you like the truck. We really love it. We're very proud of it. And uh, we can't wait to see who wins. Maybe it'll be you. Uh, we'll be calling you in February for you to come pick this bad boy up. So again, hope you like it. Hope you enjoy this video. And uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube. Check us out on Instagram. We'll post every single day. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.